Hi everybody, here is Christian and this is Trace5, our new channel. We did a lot of Netrunner content over at Team Warcast and it has grown over the years so much that we decided to move it to its own channel. So this is Trace5, we will be releasing our Netrunner videos here from now on. And we also hope to produce some content about maybe some other card and board games. Let's see about that. For now, you can help us out by subscribing to this channel. There's a lot of YouTube features that unlock at certain subscriber accounts. So mash that subscribe button and otherwise enjoy this video series from the German nationals. Okay, hi everybody, here's Christian from Team Cast. And I'm Ewald Gaz, all the way from the UK. Yes, and these are, this is the top cut of the German nationals. We are about to begin the first game. This is going to be an uh, interesting matchup against. Um, it's going to be our only, I think, only Swiss player in Top Cut. It's not Swiss, it's Top Cut. And uh, he's going to be playing against Radon. Yeah, yeah, I know both these guys. Um, Radon, I know from, from many years, I've seen him at Worlds and things like that. Uh, very strong Siphon Anarch player. He's yes. been doing that a lot. Uh, and also the, his opponent is the guy who basically knocked me out of the top cut, so before I could get to the top cut I had to beat this uh, Philip on the left, uh, and he's got uh, an interesting Scorpios deck. Scorpios deck? That's, oh yeah, the, the Swiss player has a Scorpios deck, yes, 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 definitely. Um, so that's actually quite an unusual, unusual start in the game, it's already is beginning. Uh, we have some technical issues here we're trying to find out, uh, but um, we already... So what, what is the Tradon playing? Do you, can you see it? Uh, it's some kind of siphon and I can't remember what exactly the mm, idea is. Oh yeah, it's probably going to be um, a wizard. It's kind of like a very popular choice these Something days. Something like that, yeah. Mm. He's, he's been playing that sort of deck for about three years now, so he's, he should be pretty competent with it. Yeah. Um, I did say to him yesterday when I mentioned he was playing a Scorpius, maybe that's a problem for you because they can get rid of your siphons um, with their ability and the cooperation, but um, I don't know, he seemed quite confident, so I guess we'll see. Let's see about that. So already starting out, what is that? Was that an inject? I think so. Oh, we have, again, we're having some technical issues here right now. I'm trying to figure this out, uh, but we're right with you. Hmm. Uh, okay, this is going to be really bad. Uh, Jesus, Jesus Christ. Yeah, there's a similar problem yesterday with inject. I played it. Thinking I need to find my breakers quickly and accidentally hit a parasite which got removed straight away and, and that sort of thing against this um, Scorpius is quite bad. It's the sort of deck that's got the um, Salem's in and uh, Hatchet Job, so as soon as you've played some kind of breaker, if the corpse has got enough more money than you, will send it back to your hand, name it and then remove it from the game. Um, so you're pretty much on limited accesses to runs on this unless you can get an employee strike, which I'm not sure if, uh, if Patrick's playing. Um, yeah, not a lot of activity. I'm looking at quite a small screen at the minute, so I'm trying to work out what's happening. But um, looks like a fairly standard st start so far for the Scorpius. It's just install the main centrals and then get some cash together. And I presume for our, our runner, uh, not much on the button where boards there. I guess he's having to think quite hard about when he uses resources or, as I say, if he uses an Siphon and it doesn't land, it'll get removed from the game with Scorpius, so that's quite tough. I think I can see that the currency is using a Hacktivist. Quite a slow, cautious start from both players at the minute. I think they're trying to feel each other out. Yeah, a little bit of discussion between them about something, and we're back to the corporation. It was before a mandatory draw. Having a little bit of a think. And we seem to have figured out our technical problems, so now we can... Oh, good. That's good, that's, that's good better. now. Now okay. I can see what's happening. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so, so far no big board set here. We see um, the um, a Swiss player has setting up here his, um, his uh, regular ice. Nothing yeah. rest yet, no runs. What I expect to happen is that at some point he'll put out a remote piece of ice, piece of ice, put something behind it to try and force the run. 
Yeah, so I guess like the idea with the, those types of ice uh, decks is to to do a recruiter kind of thing where you trash the the runner the breakers that the runner has, That's and right. then you can start uh, score behind and pretty easy end run kind of thing. Yeah, and, and the only ice he's going to have is barriers. It's all barriers, so he doesn't really care. You can install Yaga, Mimic, or whatever else. That's just making him laugh because he's spending money on breakers you're never going to use. Oh, so you think he only has as barriers? He doesn't have any code gates or anything? Yeah. Okay, wow, that's amazing. And then if uh, he'll get a lot of money, and what you can do is once you play, say, a paperclip or something like that, uh, you play a hash job, send the paper up to hand, and then play Sailor's Hospitality, nearly a paperclip. Oh, so that's definitely. amazing, that's amazing. And okay. then with the score disability, gets removed from the game. Wow, so, that's, that's very elaborate, elaborate so, uh, combination yeah. here. But these are already getting very popular these days, and I already actually got a lot of, uh, like, I played against this kind of matchup in, yeah. in the Swiss as well. Different setup, not quite with the same as Hospitality, but still it was very effective, and it kept me out as well. Yeah. Um, I, I got quite close against uh, Philip yesterday. I, I managed to get a double medium deep dig before I was finally locked out and saw four genders. Uh, unfortunately, the last of the genders was uh, the standoff, which is worth zero points. So I, I got to six and then that was it. Locked out. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, what he'll probably do at some point is put, um, when he's got Hunter Seeker in hand, put an Oak Town down or something like that behind a piece of ice to force the runner to find an answer for it. And yeah, then whatever answer they've got. Then I'll use the Hunter Seeker to kill it and move from the game. Yeah. On the other hand, I'm, I'm wondering if there's, like, what is the, exactly the tech here against the um, account siphon? Um, there's, there's not a lot in the deck to protect. He's got Beanstalks to bounce back quite quick on money. Um, and uh, I think really it's just, if you're siphoning once, he's not too bothered because it means you can get rid of whatever it is you've used to get in and ignore and or the siphon. Okay. So you might, whereas this deck normally recurs a lot of siphons with deja vu or yeah, similar things. Yeah, yeah. So that's um, what I'm worried about. Yeah. The, the, well and player can actually just pick and choose what he removes from the game so it's the siphon every time so he might only get to land three siphons mm. uh, so for Patrick that's quite bad because he'll need to use breakers like Eater or the Conspiracy Breakers which can take a lot of money yeah and also like Eater is like an AI breaker and these days there's like a lot of AI go going around I think there's like a couple of Wayland Eyes or at least one Wayland Eyes that is good against against AIs I'm not wondering um, forgetting which one it is is it the, the um, um, Colossus or the other one uh, Bulwarks Bulwarks that's got a specific Actually, mm. against AI, but uh, Colossus is a really good card because you can keep advancing it, and it just gets stronger and stronger. Yeah. Um, but as I say, I think this day I'm pretty sure it's going to be all barriers that are in there, and they're, they're pretty, you know, lightweight ones. But I mean, you rely on destroying all the. Oh, okay. So the there's cooking. a day job here from from Tradon. So something that also I think is, is very valuable these days, maybe you can try out, especially with some new cards that came out that are not legal in this, in this tournament yet, but you could also try to go with Space Ice mm. and with um, Priority Construction, and then this ice doesn't cost anything to rest, so that's actually a good choice against Account Siphon, because even if you're down to zero credits, you can still rest the ice, keep the runner out, or do some damaging stuff. Yeah, the thing to remember about that card is it only works on remote servers. Yeah, that's true. So mm -hmm. it, it's not actually Account Siphon defense per se that you can't no, you, but, yes, but it's, it still means your remote might be a little bit safe. That's true, that's true, of course. Course. Um, so here we see a score of um, priority acquisition. Oh, not a priority acquisition, the That's other one. Let's take over the other, <laughs> yeah, the yeah. other card with priority it. Priority acquisition would be a lot with different. Yeah. And um, so there's that back up for the runner. Yeah, the, the, the agenda that I managed to score that didn't win me the game yesterday, uh, standoff's quite good. It's the one where you can trash cards. Hmm. Uh, and you have to take it in turns to trash cards till somebody gives in. Uh, and that's with Scorpius' so, ability so as well. So that's something that's, that's with really Scorpius, is the, are they playing this? Yes, he's got one in there. Oh, that's... I'm looking forward to that. I've never seen this in play yet, so so this is going to be quite exciting. Okay, so I think there's a run on R&D, and that is going to be a... Is that a bailiff? It's a bailiff, yeah. Mm -hmm. So the idea is that uh, if he face checks into it and cannot break it, then I think... Um, uh, well, face, face check's fine. It's every yeah. time it's broken, the cop gets one. Ah, the broken one is where you get it. Okay, yeah. that's good. So Pepper Club will come out, mm -hmm. uh, spending his money to, to get through, and then I expect the cop to have a reaction to get rid of that Pepper Club from the game at some point. Ah, okay, so I guess the paperclip got into the discard pad because the runner discarded it, overdrew it and discarded right. it, and yeah. that's when the Scorpius ability doesn't trigger, actually. Yes, that's right. Okay, so that's the Nexus on R&D, and that is, I think, this new uh, Wayland Ice that you can trash... Uh, uh, is it Tithonium or something like yeah, that? Yeah, that's, that's the one, the Tithonium, yeah. Yeah, yeah you can sacrifice an agenda to res it for free, and yeah. it's got two trash programs which and, is also um, it's also pretty good tech against yes. against account siphon as well like yeah, if you're awesome. down to zero you can still res it and it's really painful if you if you get into it it hurts a lot yeah if yes. you're not ready for it um it's actually not too bad to break with paper clip oh there we go that's the uh, siphon that we go. Inter inter interesting that Tradon goes for it even though he doesn't really see what kind of ice there is i guess he already knows that he will mainly see uh, barriers i think yeah he's, he's seen that belly and he's assuming that it's going to be barriers hey guys 
<laughs> so we got some people talking in the background here because we are set up in a in a hallway. Okay, so all right. So that's just, as you as you promised. There are, there are two barriers here, so that's going to be an ice wall and a Merumati. Yeah, Patrick's happy to break that. Totally. And then this is where the count siphon goes. From. Yeah, there we go. He's removed the hand side from the game. So that's, okay, that makes sense. That's only one of three that's going to dig a land, I think, unless uh, Patrick plays very cleverly. The other thing to do is try and trash some of the cards from uh, from off uh, an eject, something like that, and hope that the, the Corp takes that out of the game instead, and then that gives you a free count side from which you'll be able to recur later on. So you've got to play a bit carefully about trying to attempt the corporation to get rid of a card from the game, even though it's yeah. not the optimum one. So you, yeah, I know that from the Terminal Directive campaign, where we also, uh, you know, you try to bait the, run, the yeah. corporation to, to trash something <laughs> and then play something even more valuable. Absolutely. Absolutely, Afterwards, yeah. yes. So let's see. So there's definitely at least one agenda in hand. I think it's an out town renovation. Uh, it looks like he's being quite cautious and defending his centrals. Yes, well, it makes sense too. Like um, the that's a kind of like the win strategy for the for for Wizard here. Yeah, absolutely. It's going to be uh, eat a keyhole. So that's yeah. That's a worry. So also, it's keyhole, not medium, because that's like the two variations here: either keyhole or medium. I'm assuming it's keyhole. I don't, I don't actually know for definite, but I'm, yeah. I think it is because he's playing eater as well, yeah. and the synergy between those two cards just works wonders. So I think he's a little bit more nervous because, unlike against a regular wizard deck, we might have say two paper clips. Uh, in Patrick's deck, he's got a paper clip and three eaters, so he's got many more breakers he can use to use keyhole and get cards out of the deck. So it's important for the Corp to think about how he defends, but because his ice is all pretty weak, it's it's hard to know how much you would put in front of R&D, because there are only going to be one or two credits to break anyway. Yeah, so it's going to be I had worse. Something that's interesting, I feel, in uh, against um, against um, Scorpius is that um, usually uh, like a good way for for um, uh, for Anarchs to draw cards is through inject, and that's kind of like very dangerous against Scorpius, of course, Extra because so, if you yeah. actually draw in something important stuff, it goes it's away gone. forever. That's it. But equally, it's important to try and brush the deckers run and get the things you need to break and see some agendas. Yes. Um, it's a very difficult balance. If you've not got employee strike to turn off that ability, it's difficult to know what to do, to be honest. Definitely. It Absolutely. depends on the cards and the corpse hand. On the other hand, we, in, in, in the current meta, we see a lot of employee strike. Usually, oh, yeah. um, most decks run at least two or three, even. Usually three these days, yeah. Yeah, And, of course, uh, there's also the possibility of recursion. I guess, I guess if you play current, then you can remove it with Scorpius, right? Because it gets in trash, then? Then it, you uh, can... it's trashed when it's overwritten, yeah, or yeah, whatever, okay. yeah. Yeah, that's how um, Philip on the left managed to get rid of one of my parasites yesterday. He over overwrote a piece of his own ice that I parasited, and then yeah. that trashed the parasite so they can redeem from the game. Alright, so. so there's the run R&D, I guess, second click. It's kind of fascinating that he, I, I, I guess he knew what kind of deck he's, he's against because like he, he, he's able to face check all the stuff and he only has paperclip. Although does the corporation have sapper? Not that I saw. Because that would be a pretty good good idea to add to it, like a surprise sapper, especially yeah. on those medium deck, deep, deep decks, is something that can really uh, completely ruin your game as we saw recently yeah. <laughs> at, at the Euro Championship. All right, ah, so that's, 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 a, that's a employee strike. And a plus great, just to be safe. That's, um, th those are both or reasonable choices, although still no agendas for the runner. On the other hand, the corporation only has this um, hostile takeover, and that's not going to be winning the game for now. I yeah. think this is more of a sacrificial agenda. Yeah, absolutely. It's to get a bit of money and uh, have something to sacrifice to raise the bigger ice. There might actually be. Is there an archer in here? I can't remember. I played several whalers yesterday. I can't remember what's the composition of decks. Um, now, interestingly, with that employee strike, I'd have held on to it until the next turn when I was going to do something, because. If the court does have a current to overwrite it or a hostile takeover in hand, they could clear that straight away. So I'd serve it to the first look of the turn and then run. And then if you steal agendas, whatever, you're not going to get, you know, hunter seekers later on. Mm. But playing the playing the current last feels a little bit better. Oh, here we go. This is uh, ah, there we go. The Salem hospitality. Yeah, he's got to guess for a card in hand to get rid of it. Maybe a count. Account is a very good choice. Oh no, let play straight. Ah, uh, uh, no. Myself. Oh, that's that's smart because he actually saw which card he has on hand because there was an inject and that's where he saw the the. the so draw it. Yeah. That's that's a really good idea. So there's also an eater in here. So I guess that's an alternative choice for um, for Tradon to install the eater if the if the paperclip gets somehow removed. Oh, that's an interesting splash. 
Uh, yeah, that is. Uh, that is. Um, I forgot the name, but the idea is that you get as many credits as you have tags. I think it's is it credits and cards or is it just credits? I can't remember which uh, one. But it might be credits. I think it might be just credits. I'm yeah. sure exactly. And somebody played against yesterday, me yesterday, and they had like 20 credits. Yeah, yeah. So I get a whisper uh, <laughs> from Mark here. He says that it is you have to play it as priority. Yes, first click. Yeah. And then you get as many credits as you have tags. No, no card draw. Ah, that's, yeah, the decks I've seen it in normally have Obelus and things like that as well, so you draw lots of cards. Marsh for Martians is the, yeah. is the title, yes, yes. Uh, I always feel like there's like a blonde woman on the, on, the, on the cover, and I always feel like this is from Mad Max, the bad guy from Mad Max. <laughs> like, for some reason, it, it reminds me of that guy. It's a stereotype type of noise and got a wall. Yeah. Counter surveillance. Alright, so... Um, so what is happening here right now? I think Tradon is really trying to figure out how to what to deal with. Okay, so the dirty laundry on on R and D. Yeah, he gets uh, he's got bad publicity, so he can. Yeah, it's get gonna be cheap for him, but it also on the other hand, uh, Velo Trampler. That's kind of a real weird Velo Trampler. Also gets a. Um, Gets, 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 a credit, gets a credit from this. So and and we see I, right now. I, I'm not sure, but yeah, oh yeah, right. Tradon is uses a dice as a credit counter, so yeah, we're not really so. sure how much credit. I think 14. Is that 14? Yeah, it's or 11. It's 11. two digits. At least. Yes, two digits numbers. 13 now. I mean, one of the, one of the things he's looking for normally with his his deck is obviously keep the the corp down to as few credits as possible and then keyhole like crazy. Um, but as he's only going to have a limited number of siphons, it's quite difficult for him to do that. Yes. So I think he's just playing the game of single access at the minute. Yeah, right now, uh, yeah, probably yes. And on, on we see that that one uh, Oktong, Oktong grid uh, agenda. He's still sat there smiling at us, isn't it? Yeah, I think, Innovation, the, yeah. I think the court just drew a targeted marketing or something, it looks like, as a current. Hmm. Which would be interesting. I mean, that would be probably a good idea on a paperclip if you, if you somehow got rid of it. Yeah, yesterday I managed to go to target uh, a chameleon deck which will target marketing <laughs> and <laughs> I got a lot of friends from that. Some money there, I, guess, yeah. I still lost the game though. <laughs> but you were rich. Yes. <laughs> Alright, so there's still some thinking. Yeah, it's difficult with the paper clip still on the board. The court knows that the only but only guy he's got is barriers, so he can't put anything down really. To be honest, yeah. Unless he just assumes that you know Patrick's stupid. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's kind of like a standoff situation here, where Patrick seems to have like the solution for all the all the ice uh, on table. But of course, this can change so so quickly because we know that the co that the corporation has a lot of tools yeah. to uh, to get this uh, get this paper clip uh, gone from there. And then that's going to be a, quite difficult, maybe, for Patrick to do something here. Corporation uh, is trying to decide where to put the ice. Shoring up R&D a little bit. I think that's mm -hmm. Patrick's plan is just a single access. And there we go, target marketing. So that removes the the ability, the... Um, Use employee strike. The strike. So the and also, I mean, we don't, of course, that's a problem always. We don't have the audio from the table, so we don't, we're not really sure what, what they picked. But what would you have picked? Account siphon? Uh, it, it's a strong choice because yeah. then you know you're never going to get down on money, and while you're ahead of money's court, you can always use the hatchet job to get rid of that paper clip. So, but one funny it, thing you can also do, I'm not sure if, sure if this works, but you can also sh maybe pick employee strike. <laughs> you could do. I'm not sure yeah, if, the, if the trigger is correctly, but, uh, but it yeah. might be a good choice there as well. But yeah, account safe is probably a good choice. Something that as a criminal runner, I often struggle a lot with when people pick account yeah. safe, and that really shuts you down. Yeah, I think I think it would definitely a good choice here. Hmm. Um, the only other possible choice is maybe keyhole, but then if you're getting keyhole, it doesn't matter if you've got some money, you're going to lose quite a lot of agendas yeah, really quickly. That's true. So account siphon's probably a good choice. Mm -hmm. I mean, the main thing was to get rid of employee strike and yeah. get you, you know your corp ability online. Again. Yeah. So now trashing trashing the the, um, the breaker will actually do a lot of damage. Okay, so that's another um, another uh, vanilla vanilla there. Yeah, it's getting a credit trashy, from actually. bailiff. It's good to see Bailiff at work. I, th I think this is the first time we actually see Bailiff actually creating credits for somebody yeah, <laughs> on, this, on the stream. Yeah, I just parasited as soon as I saw it. When <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those cards, yes. If you're not really parasite, then yeah. you've just got to give the corpse some money. I wonder if he plays something like um, um, uh, Quicksand. Because I think Quicksand is also a great card on R&D especially. Yeah, maybe. I've tried to make it work, but again, parasite's a bit of an issue. It is a bit of an issue, that's true. 
All right, so that is going to be Shore Gamble and discarding in Black Orchestra. Yeah, makes sense. I think he's starting to realize now that that's never going to be used. And if he does need it, it's now in a place where he can pull it back as a conspiracy break and bring Definitely. it to play. It, so. Absolutely. If there's one like random quandary in there just yes. to make you install an entire black orchestra for it. When I played this style deck, I put in like one magnet and one rotor turret or something like that. Yeah, Is that yeah. kind of, you put, just put an odd piece of icing just to catch people off guard. Yeah, that's, that's a pretty good idea. I think. Uh, for a while, uh, Rene played also similar similar deck, and yeah. I remember that oh, he also had like the big um, barriers as well in there, like curtain wall in there. So that was yeah. really painful to deal yeah, with yeah. it. So it's a little bit tough for the corp here. They're kind of trying to look for the cards to get rid of um, Patrick's tools, but all the time when he's drawing, obviously agenda starts to pile up in hand. I think he's just drawn another hostile takeover, which isn't too bad. Okay. Um, so that'll probably get scored next turn. Yeah. Increase the money advantage. Even more money for, for him, and of course, another agenda to sacrifice to the agenda gods. <laughs> yeah. The trouble, of course, is it's another bad publicity, so getting into R&D or HQ is basically free at that point. Oh, is that another Salem? Oh, no, he it's gets back Salem. Yeah, mm, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Travel has to read this up. I mean, it's not a card to see often. When it was released, it was a bit popular for, like, I think, one tournament or so. Yeah, yeah. And, and now it, ha it hasn't seen so, too much play, but now, of course, with. Um, with Scorpius, that's probably a really good home for, for this agenda. Yeah, absolutely. Especially when combined with Hatch. And that agenda operations, yeah. Yeah, yeah that, absolutely, yes. So let's see what, what happens now. So Tradon cuts the deck, first click. I mean, if the runner's wise, he should be able to get enough money up so he knows that he's never going to get a hatchet job to land, so he could, he could be safe with his paper clip, but... Okay, run on R&D. Single access, wow. I, I mean, it's cost four credits to get in here, or three? Uh, yeah, it's got a bad publicity, so it's a couple of credits. The trouble is, you've got to think, is, is Hunter Seeker live as well? If the corpse has got one of those, you run in for a single access, steal an agenda, and then you could lose your breaker forever. Yeah, so that's, that's, that's a real danger here, although we saw Tradon have the... Um, mm, Eater on hand, but of course that won't do anything now. He can maybe account that, but he won't be able to access cards he from can't the remote, so that's the problem. I mean, he will keyhole then. Yes, but that, that keyhole will be slower when he have to, has to pay four credits every time or Absolutely. three credits. Yeah. And if I was trying on that, I think that's what I'd be doing. He's looking for my keyhole, mm -hmm. uh, and then you don't have to access the agenda. You can just keep putting them in archives. Yeah. And then Hunter Seeker doesn't do anything, so you, you you know you're pretty safe from that angle at least. Yeah, yeah. Something I've seen in some of those uh, wizard decks is like one splash of an apocalypse. Mm. Which is a good way to end the game later on when all the agendas are in, in archives. Yeah. I prefer right. more account siphons myself. <laughs> more account siphons. <laughs> yeah. I've been known to play three and the plan as well. And we saw briefly there MK Ultra was in this card pile as well. So yeah. now uh, Tradon is also um, prepared for uh, eventual maybe if there is a sapper in there, like a, a rogue um, sapper in there. That would help a lot. All right, there's an upgrade installed on HQ. I mean, we have to assume maybe this is a Chrysium Grid. That's probably a Chrysium Grid, yeah. And there's Salem's Hospitality. I wonder what, what else is going to get trashed. Yeah, that's, is, that's yeah. a good choice there. He knew the eats was in hand already. Removed so. from the game too. Yep. So no eating for you. I mean, arguably that's something else you perhaps should have done as a as the runners put the extra breaker down just for safety. Yeah, um, but of course on, on the board it's not safe either, right? No, <laughs> there's no no place to be safe from the Scorpius. But they can only hatch a job one of your breakers, so you'd still have one left. So you know, it, and it costs the court money, so it's probably worth getting it down actually. That's a tough, tough, uh, tough game for Tradon here. He did some have some accesses, but he didn't see any agendas yet. So, uh, so that's really painful for him. Uh, but on the other hand, it's not like um, a, a Velo Trampler. I have to I have to remember that this <laughs> Velo Trampler is uh, is scoring out either. So, uh, so a bit of a stalled game right now. Players are feeling themselves still out. All right, finally an agenda for. Wow, uh, what is no, that? No, that's that's the standby. Oh, oh stand off, you mean? Stand off, sorry. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, so that does nothing. Nothing for the runner. Well, maybe he has like dark, dark nets or something <laughs> 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 to get another account. I can go. Shut on that, yeah. 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 <laughs> See, the trouble is, you steal that. It's worth nothing to you as runner, but it, you might get Hunter Seeker now. Ah, uh, oh, triggers so. Hunter Seekers. Oh, that's a really good choice there. So this might be. We're gonna. We might see a Hunter Seeker coming up. Can't see one in hand. I don't think so. It looks like there's at least two agendas, maybe three in hand there. Mm, uh, there's a bailiff. Yeah. 
there, that's, that's difficult. I mean, he could just put down uh, a, an ice and install an agenda, then let Tradon steal it, and then punish with Hunter Seeker, but I don't think he has a Hunter Seeker on hand. That's the problem. It, yeah. So he might be looking and pull one off the top of his deck when it's mandatory draw. Um, and then he could maybe risk one more draw because okay. it's a double Hunter Seeker, so that's the best you can do. But with three agendas already in hand, it's kind of how many cards do you want to keep pulling to your hand? Now here's an interesting puzzle, like if uh, Tridon has a um, rebirth, what would you rebirth into? A Quetzal? Or maybe into a, um, what's the guy who trusts operations? Edward Kim, Edward yeah, Kim, that's, yeah. That's probably a better choice, choice, right? Cause, yeah. Yeah, Castle gets you to one ice only and, and that's uh, there's multiple barriers here, so that won't yeah. do much right now. Now he chose to run R and D again last click there and what I probably would have done since he's already stolen an agenda, so Hunter Seeker's live, whatever. Uh, mm. maybe go for HQ because there's been a lot of drawing going on where Jackson's been used. Yeah. And the corpse only scored that one agenda, so you've got to think there must be some agendas in hand by now. Yeah, I feel like often the hunter the stealing an agenda in this kind of matchup is kind of like this uh, you know, alarm call for being like crazy going balls to the wall because this might be the last one you have this in your is, game. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so that is actually an install of a remote server. So I can't see um, our Swiss friend putting an agenda down just yet. He'll want to do it when he's got the Hunter Seeker to use it straight after. So it seems a waste to, to feed Tread on an agenda when you've got no punishment to back it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but he's already preparing, once he draws into it, you can install Advanced Advance, for example, Global Food, and that's yeah. going to be a huge, huge threat. What kind of ice did he, did he install there, do you think? Was that a bailiff or was this this crazy expensive ice? Uh, I didn't see, to be honest. I was too busy nattering. We don't see the bailiff anymore. It's kind of difficult to see their hands. Yeah, we need to get you some, some extra cameras done. Yeah, we? yeah. And then get more some Patreon supporters, get some money against yeah, extra cameras. So this, <laughs> this, is the, this is the moment where we remind you to, <laughs> to join us on Patreon so we can get uh, some peach hack level kind of hardware. <laughs> yeah, that'd be good. So it's, it's a bit of decision for the court now. Yeah. He's, he's got agendas in hand. How much do you draw for some other kind of answer? Or, you know, do you just try and take money so that you can have this? I, I think really he did have a host, another hostile in hand. He seems to be reluctant to use it because it's going to be another bad pub for, for yeah. Tredon. And then it's yeah. easier runs into central. He would be able to run on, um, on R&D so quickly. I don't, I don't think he needs the, the hostile takeover right now because he already has one scored. So, like, again, if the, assuming this is a sacrificial agenda, he um, he already has one already there. Yeah, I think it'll just get to the point where he, he literally can't do anything else, so he has to score it. Otherwise, he's discarding the card from hand. Right, checking out archives, but not running there. Just checking out. Uh, it looks like Tradon's at least halfway through his deck, so I'm surprised we've not seen. Wow, a keyhole or something there. Maybe it's just the angle of the this camera. This has been a very slow deck. Okay, so uh, game. I mean, there, so there's a déjà vu. Déjà vu. I've been in this place yeah, right. before. There's a reason for the game. Yeah, that's probably a good choice, though. Yeah. Yeah. I mean. Uh, yeah. I'd you wouldn't déjà vu for déjà vu, though. So, but. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe same old thing, déjà vu, to get some kind of stuff back. Yeah, it's basically because it was last click, so he thought, well, I could get rid of that because nothing yeah. else is going to happen this turn. So that's something else you've got to be aware of as, as a runner. Like, try not to do something that trashes a card last click, because if Scorpius has done nothing else, it will definitely get rid of that card. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, if you're going to do something like that, do it early, and then give them the quandary about whether to use their ability or not. That's true, that's probably a good idea. All right, so here's Velo Trampler. <laughs> Trampler. By the end of this match, I'll have that. I will down. have it out. He, he said he drove with a bike uh, from from Swiss to here. I'm not sure if he was joking because Velo sounds that like, like he might be a bike buff kind of person. He is suddenly somewhere looking up. Yeah, he stole money. Okay. Keeping his hand intact. Uh, I'm not sure what. Trident has in terms of HQ pressure, but I imagine there's a want of destruction somewhere. All right, so that's a keyhole that, as you suggested, that's going to be the the um, strategy generally for Trident to do a keyhole for the win. And it seems like he's trying to do the, that. Again, this will be a very slow keyhole because he has to pay at least three credits, I think, to get through. Yeah, it's three credits, right? Yeah, but he's got a, a bad publicity, so he only costs. Yeah, so two. it's two. Yeah, okay. <coughs> 
So one thing to be aware of as well is that Scorpius is a smaller deck because it's got the uh, 44 right, cards. Right, of course, yeah. So mm -hmm. Keyhole's an extra threat against you because, you know, you haven't got as many cards to start with. So Villa Trampler has to be really... Um, Frustrated that he didn't rule into the, the Hunter Seeker. I don't yeah, know how many he plays. Now from oh, no, Keyhole. <laughs> no! Do you think he's playing something like uh, Archive Memories? Um, I don't think so because the hatchet jobs and Salem's are quite expensive mm. when it um, Although maybe he can get the Salem's for free if he's got three Jacksons and three hatchet jobs. But yeah, the, the influence spend's quite tight, I think. Tough, tough. Uh, and of course, global food cost influence as well. So I, if I was Villa Trampler, I probably would install even more Isotron of R&D, go full Yarrow. Like, there's, you can install more than three Isotron in, in front of a server. That's like yeah. this game, you know? And it doesn't, it's not like he doesn't have the money, you know? Maybe. I, I think, like I said, the trouble is that all these ice is garbage, so the best is going to be something like an ice wall, uh, okay. which will just cost another run, one credit. Another keyhole. Tradon decides to go for Octagon Innovation, yeah. so that's uh, our agenda. So that's of uh, um, Keyhole is actually a really good strategy against this kind of deck because then he can like just Keyhole and not score any agendas. Yeah. So Hunter Seeker won't be won't be hot. Exactly. For a while. Yeah. We've only seen one Jackson use so far as well, so it'll be interesting to see if there's still two more left. Or I know some decks go quite low on Jackson Howard as well. Maybe only play two rather than the full three. Yeah, so Vero Tramp Trampler really has to like he's full full on top deck mode. He really has to like draw into the stuff that he needs to get out of this this uh, frustrating situation right yeah, now. Yeah, I think that might have been a hunter seek. We just pulled up. There, oh, that's good. Possibly. That's good. But of course, now with the keyhole, it's, it doesn't do too much, right? Uh, no, but what he can do is start now install forcing advanced. agendas mm, out, okay, yeah, yeah. And, and then Trevor's got to make a choice about whether to take it or not. Okay, so as we talked about, yeah, he did install another ice in front of R and D. Yeah. It looks like actually Tradon's quite low on credits. I think that's a four, is it, on his D20? It's yeah, like it's four. I think it's a four. So the thing is with the, these sort of siphon decks is quite often they rely on landing the siphon to get money to do things. So yeah. um, by not being able to land the siphon, it means that Tradon's short on money as well. I mean, he could run on HQ and trash the um, Christian grid, but then, of course, he'd... He would score an agenda, possibly. Potentially score Well, it's more than likely, given the way the course yeah. is. And when you slow on money, it was. Right. Right. Well, you know, he has all, all the stuff he already needs. Yep. Oh, turntable, interesting. But so nothing, a uh, same old thing, I guess, will help. But there's no account siphon in, in this card part, is there? Okay, the key, um, keyhole is removed using ability of... of yeah, I, I guess that um, the corpse they can hear if you can get rid of that other keyhole. Yeah. And that's, that's you think there's only two keyholes in a deck? Uh, probably. Mm. I think that's the right number. Okay. So that would also be a good solution for the corporation. But I'm, so that's the question: Do you go for a keyhole or do you go for a paperclip? Like, I guess if you if you um, you, you would go for a paperclip. But then again, it's like, I think Tradon is looking for another um, employee strike, because if you can get an employee strike, you can be very aggressive, start a score the enemy from HQ. Yeah, I, yeah, I don't think, I think really wants money. Mm. That's what he's digging That's for. That's true, yeah. Mm. Um, yeah, if the core can get rid of that paperclip, then he knows it's just AR breakers that are left in the in the deck. So he can score happily behind a vanilla or something, you know, the, the core's never going to be able to, sorry, the runner's never going to be able to get in. But that paperclip's doing a lot of work for Tradon. Oh man, that's a, that's a very busy paperclip. Oh, he's thrown away his water destruction. Okay, no water destructions for you. I don't like that. Mm. But I guess there's, we, we assume it's a Christian grid that's on the HQ, so he's not getting in there anytime soon. Yeah, that's true. You would have to trash it anyway if you want to count siphon. Okay, so, that's the hatchet. so what does that, that do? So it's a trace five, I think, something ridiculous. It's a double, uh, and if the court wins the trace, then you return a card to the runner's hand. Oh, so that's going to so be the trick now. So Sam's hospitality now. Yeah, afterwards. pick the breaker and you say Sam's hospitality. I guess you've got that paper clip in your hand. Seems I've just oh, sent it there. Oh, why did you have it in your hands? <laughs> oh, oh, oh! It would oh, be. Oh. oh, it's not safe there either. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there it goes. <laughs> so that was that was um, that was the game plan of uh, Villo Villo Trampler yeah. paying out here. Yeah. Let's see how. It took a while to get there, but you got there. Let's see how Tradon can get out of this one. Tradon, the top ranking player from the Swiss rounds? Yeah, yeah, King of Swiss. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. So now I, I, these sort of um, Cypher Nanak decks tend to have just one Conspiracy Breaker, so that's probably the only competitive that he's got. Um, due to the influence on Cyphers and stuff, he's probably not got Parasites. So now I think from the court's point of view, they can comfortably score out behind any piece of ice and yeah. he's not going to be able to get to it. Although one thing to note, actually, is there's um, a knife in in the bin, I think, mm -hmm. and he's got same old thing, so if he gets an E2, he could uh, knife whatever barrier there is in front, didn't move the game, and then run again and steal an agenda. But Okay, yeah, that's, that's that, a possibility, that will, technically, you know, yes. Mm -hmm. I'm sure as that knife gets used, that'll be the last time it's ever used that we removed from the game, so... Yeah. Pretty tough spot now for the so running. I wonder what Chalons do. I guess he's really like rethinking his strategy right now, and there's maybe some some way out. Uh, it's really tough because he's got yeah. he's got two eaters left, I think. Yeah. Um, so you can get there's an eater in the sky pile, right? Is there? Is there? Okay. I'm not sure if there's an eater there actually. The, I, I, yeah, we had one trash. I thought one got removed from the game, but I'm not, yeah, I'm not sure if it was removed from the game or trashed. There's another card that's hidden by the paperclip. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that was the employee strike. And then discarding a forked that yeah, probably won't do any, any, no, no, any, to anybody anything right here. <laughs> I'm surprised he's got rid of both his turntables because he's got that zero point agenda. I guess. Oh no, he's already stolen that, so that doesn't matter. Yeah, but I guess it, it, there's just one, right? But there's only one in the day, yeah. But maybe matter, he assumed, uh, uh, yeah, you could maybe assume that there's no. It seems like, I don't know, it seems like Tradon really knows exactly what, what he's playing against. Maybe he played against the um, other player uh, in Swiss rounds yeah, or something. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. He seems to be really familiar with what's happening here. And then we see Villa Trampler as, as, as expected trying to score behind an ice. So if he's lucky, Tradon might have an eater to hand and enough money to. Run, bounce off the ice, then same old thing. The knife to get rid of the ice, then run and take the agenda. But that's, I don't think he's got enough money. Or a surprise DDoS. <laughs> <laughs> or a surprise I, inside job. <laughs> uh, DDoS is on the NWL, he's definitely not got the influence for that. Well, you know, it's just influence. <laughs> uh, and then, of course, there's always the worry that there might be a Hunter Seeker as well. But uh, Yeah, that's true. Yeah, he's looking really low on cards now. He's, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, there's not too much cards left. We've seen a similar, a similar. Oh, there's the second eater, so that's good. So we that's might see. That's oh, a one credit. But there's no, cl no, cl no click left for the same old, yeah, uh, same old knife, right? No, he's just had to take a credit for his last click, and there goes the cancel. Yeah, that's probably a really good choice. Yeah, I think the corpse looking in a pretty good position right now. Advance that bad boy, you get some more money. Yeah, I'm trying to just remind him to take some credits for advancing. And I wouldn't be surprised at all if something else just get jammed right behind that. But probably now the corpse wondering. Oh, no, they are. He didn't. He went for it. Because the runner's on zero points at this point, you can let him have an agenda if he finds a sneaky way in. That's all right. Yeah, yeah. You can be. You can afford to be a bit bold right now. And of course, the scoring the agenda's got rid of the M strike as well. So. Things looking bad. Okay, Tradon just gets money, interestingly. Yeah. I mean, he was very low on money, so that's fair. Scorpius missed the trigger to get rid of that day job, but I don't think it matters. I'm not sure what went into the vote. I assumed it was an agenda, but I don't know. So double bounce is probably a food. You can let the run out too. Yeah, pro food no. is a really great choice here right now, and because if he, there's a good chance he will get it, and even if runner steals at just two points. Yeah, uh, and if he scores it, then he has six, and he had a yeah. hostile in hand, so he can just win next time. Yeah, that would be that would put him at at a at match point basically. And Tradon really has to think about what to do now. Yeah, he's not getting into HQ or R&D really. You can maybe do. Oh, there we go. <laughs> now That's interesting. Three employee strikes now, right? Yeah. Uh, so you can maybe keyhole once or twice, which feels Same good. old siphon, I would assume. No, 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 no. Um, no, 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 no. I think this is going to be a it can't knife. Be using. Yeah, knife to get in, as you suggested. Yeah. I pr I probably would have just run first to make him res. Uh, then because then he won't res. And then that I still stays here. Uh, yeah, right? exactly. Mm. So you're not you're not destroying it. All you're doing is getting that agenda. Okay. If it is an agenda, I so that's it. an agenda he will get here. Yeah, it's food. It's good. 
and because of the employee strike, knives is still in this card pile, so it can be recurred potentially. So yep. I think now Velo Trampler has to maybe put two eyes in front of theirs just to make sure that the, the knife won't end the yeah. scoring pattern for him. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I don't know how much recursion that Trudel's got left now. He's used at least two Semmel things. I've said at least one Deja Vu go, maybe two. So uh, it's quite a shot and cards he's got that he can use to actually use that knife. Oh, again. actually scoring the, uh, the um, hostile takeover here out of hand. Yep, that's to get rid of the employee strike. So that's, That makes sense. And also, I mean, the, the back up doesn't really do too much for no, Trudel no, anymore. Really care too much. Well, the carpet, the, the carpet, the court is looking quite low on cards as well now. Well, something so. that Shradon technically still can do is is to um, to keyhole, keyhole, and try and mill him. Yeah, <laughs> but he's just not he's not to he's not much to get the economy up. Yeah, he doesn't have the, the credits to to pull that kind of stuff off. Corporation at four points, or runner currently at two. So yeah, I think the couple feel fairly comfortable. He gets another piece of ice. He can put that on the remote and start pushing out agendas again. Wow, discarding a, a um, retrieval run there. Yeah, it's not much use. No, no, no. I don't think. I mean, he could run archives and retrieve something, but there's nothing to retrieve, right? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. There's nothing so, to retrieve. Yeah, I think uh, Tradon was a little bit too aggressive early on running R&D. Uh, I think he, was, he would have been better building his, uh, his cash reserves up, no, trying yeah. to protect a little bit against the hatch job, and then when it comes to this later game, he'd have more money to make the keyhole runs. Yeah. Uh, spending money on and clicks doing just single accesses of R&D doesn't feel strong for this deck. No, especially when the, run, the corporation also gets the credit for this yeah. with the bailiff. And then you're opening yourself up to So you think this, this was basically the, the mistake to, uh, by, by Tradon by going too, too low on the credits yes, to, to, be, to expose himself to the hatchet job? Yeah, and it, it probably would have been worth finding siphons earlier and trying to use them if you could. Hmm. Uh, when you had money, get rid of the Christian grid so you can threaten the one to destruction and things like that. So, I mean, it's tough. You have to take a, a call up when you're there, but... Single access is when you've got a keyhole in your deck, doesn't feel like a way forward. So that's an interesting situation for the uh, corporation too, because they don't have too much cards in archives either, uh, in, in their R&D either. So they Not have to... They, oh, wow, there's another there's another eater there. What did he choose? Uh, whatever it was, it didn't get picked. <laughs> didn't get picked but we know that there's another eater, so yeah. even if that eater gets like... Um, uh, what's it called um, Hunter Secret? Uh, it's still yeah. May oh, maybe he just played it to see if if Tradon has some kind of recursion on hand. Yeah, you, you make a guess at a card, yeah. and even if you if you fail, you can sort of see what's what's coming from the runners' point of view. Yeah. Uh, yeah. This this guy, he's done this with me as well. He when he looks into his um, archives for Jackson, he actually picks all the first down cards up and turns them all the same way. Mm. And then now he's put them back again. I think the judge is having a call saying uh -oh. which ones are face up and which ones are face down. Uh -oh. he... So did you make a mistake there? Um, no, we're just trying to clarify which okay. cards were okay. visible to the runner or not. So I think he's got away with it. All right, so that's going to be... So Oktan's supposed to be going back in and then, yeah, yep, two more sailings. Two sailings. And that Salem gets his card. So that R and D looks really thin, actually. Yeah. Um, uh, but we saw that he has a um, um, food on hand. Yeah. So he can try to do this one more time, but he has to be sure that that Tradon can't access this. Not because Tradon would win because of the two points, but simply because it's so crucial for the corporation to, um, to for for the win. Yeah. He would, he would just immediately win if he can pull this off. Yeah. Yeah. So I think the, the judge is still trying to discover which cards were face up and which weren't, and if there's some misplay that happened here. Yeah. That would be very painful for if, if Velo Trampler would lose this game on some kind of technicality like this. It would. Um, our, our head judge did have a conversation with me earlier and said, please be kind, because I have to make a decision. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, has been uh, has been single-handedly <laughs> managing the, today and yesterday and today. So yeah, he's been doing a good job so far. Yeah. I've had a couple of calls, which he's come over and gave the correct decision on, <laughs> from my point of view. <laughs> once but, he but actually legally correct answers as well. Once once gave me the incorrect decision, <laughs> you have to, and then I was like, I, if this is wrong, then you, you owe me one. <laughs> and it, he was wrong, so he owes me one. So we're counting cards left in R and D now. Okay, it's, like, it's like eight or something. Yeah, that's. So, the, the corpse trying to think now, like, am I going to see another piece of ice? If I can get two ice down, I can definitely get my agenda yeah. out. Um, yeah. One ice may not be enough. Uh, and then also he's got to balance that against 
what's he got left in his deck? Yeah, so that's not the So it looks like we're going for a KO. So you don't really care about giving the court money at this point. No, not two hostiles really. scored, so that saves you two credits on entry. So it's only two credits to so actually gain four credits, about two bad pups. So yeah, yeah. So that's the problem with um. That's of course very. It's not what the corporation wanted to do is to score out the second hostile takeover so so early because that's that makes running on R and D so viable. Yeah, and I think he was saving the second one for when employees try came out. Okay, so there's another agenda up there. I mean, something we have... Oh, yeah. Okay, never mind. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, I think Tradon really just wants to go maybe for a, for a mill win here. Yeah, absolutely. That's the way out. I mean, he can mill one, one additional card each turn, even if he's down to zero credits. Yeah. So, what he needs to do is make sure he ends the turn on enough money so that he could deja vu the um, uh, knife. Mm, that's true, and yes. And then that... That means that the court won't feel secure with just one piece of ice defending an agenda, so it keeps the court from trying to rush something out if you keep enough money in your credit pool and worry them. Uh, did, did you have a deja vu in hand? Did, did you see it? Uh, on I can't a hedge, remember, on a... but um, if you can at least threaten it, because yeah. if you look at how many cards are left in, in his uh, deck. We have, we, have to have, we have to assume that the corp, the Velo, Velo Trampler, did look at his hand through the Salem's Hospitality. He did, so, yeah, yeah. so I'm sure he was looking for that kind of card, like what can you do to, to trash this, this ice. Absolutely, but he'll count the number of deja vu's and self Oh, there, there it is, there, yeah, is, there, there was one, yeah. yeah. Oh, wow, so that might be a deja vu actually on R&D to make the R&D runs just cost one credit. No, uh, now then this is quite dangerous. No, on archives, wow, okay. what? I'm not fully sure why he's done that. Uh, Jax has just been used, so... That I mean, he will, get, that was, he will get a agenda. And that takes away his threat on the remote now as well. I don't mm. like this play, but... <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> this, this goes south so, so horribly. Uh, he has got two bad pub credits, but it still costs six for the to what get What did through. he do there? What was the idea? I don't know. I think he might be hoping there's enough agenda. Oh, maybe he was, he was actually going for some, some kind of apocalypse play? No, he, no, he doesn't have the credits. No money. Um, we've seen his hand, we know it's not there. Oh, huh, weird. Okay. So he did break the wraparound. Uh, uh, it might be on time. Uh, so that, must, that was probably the last. Yeah, that must have been the last play of the game. So he just assumed he'd try and steal what he could. Okay, so that means uh, we Velo Trampler has won this game on with with four agenda points. Yeah. Okay. Wow. That was that was a weird yeah, match. Really strange game, yeah. a weird weird game. So uh, yeah, we're gonna move on to the next game in a second here. Uh, but uh, so stay tuned. We're gonna see a second game. Uh, I'm not sure if we're gonna go move over to the Velo Trampler table or another one. See you in a bit. So this is Christian uh, back after editing again. I feel I have to clarify one important thing. Um, so it seems like Velo Trampler did a uh, small mistake here because he rest the wraparound. If he had not rest uh, the wraparound, then Tradon would have scored the one point agenda and would not be able to um, mad dash into it to get up to four points. Tradon won this match even though it was a tie because Tradon had the higher seat. So kind of like a very, very close victory here. And one that was caused by a blunder by Velo Trampler. So kind of like an unfortunate ending. Uh, but yeah, we're going to move on to the next game very soon. Uh, but I want to remind you to mash that subscribe button because it really, really helps us uh, getting this channel started. And otherwise, see you next time around. And as always, hack the planet! Hack the planet! Hack the planet! Shut up and get in the car! Shit on me.